April 12, 2021 marks the 75th anniversary of the dedication of the home of Franklin Roosevelt National Historic Site here in Hyde Park, New York. It was FDR's wish that the home eventually be turned over to the American people and the National Park Service. A year to the day, Eleanor Roosevelt fulfilled this wish with the dedication ceremony of the home and grounds here in Hyde Park, New York. While we can't be there to celebrate in person this year, the National Park Service celebrates this momentous occasion virtually. We will hear from a wide array of speakers offering their thoughts and congratulations on the 75th anniversary of this home. We think we have a special site here. It appears others do as well. Hi, I'm Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and I'm so pleased to join the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the home of Franklin Delano Roosevelt becoming a National Historic Site. Since 1946, the historic site has welcomed, delighted, and enlightened visitors from around the world, giving them unique insight into one of the greatest presidents in American history. It's truly one of our national treasures, and I was proud to author legislation in 2019 to preserve and protect park operations and the FDR view shed by allowing the National Park Service to expand this magnificent property. During a time when our country was desperately hurting, FDR rethought and reshaped American society. Generations of Americans have reaped the economic and societal benefits of his New Deal promise, a doctrine that government can and should help its people. We should look to his example now as we work to recover from this pandemic. We need to respond to the crisis with ideas of the same scale. That's why I pushed for the American Rescue Plan to create a nationwide health force and why I'm focused on investing in infrastructure and green jobs across the country to rebuild our communities and our economy. This is the moment to think big. In the words of FDR, we as Americans have, quote, always held to the hope, the belief, the conviction that there is a better life a better world beyond the horizon. If we look to his example, we can build that better world together. Congratulations on your 75th anniversary. Please accept my best wishes for a wonderful event. I'm Linda Bird Johnson Robb, and I'm the daughter of Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson. And my father was very honored to be considered one of FDR's boys. He was a great mentor to my father and I'm sure that my father used his name many times when he was in Congress to be able to push some of the things he supported along. And I grew up never knowing that there was anybody who didn't love FDR because in our household, he was spoken of with such great reverence. I was born in March of 1944 and President Roosevelt gave this book, The True Story of Fala, to me as a baby present. And as you can see here, it says to Linda Bird Johnson from the master of the pup, Franklin D. Roosevelt. This has been one of my prized possessions. And I'm so honored to have this book as a present from him and a remembrance of how much I loved and cared about him. And I learned that in my father's knee. And behind us, we have a copy of the great FDR portrait that Madame Schumatop was painting. And that has always been in our household uh, since Daddy was president. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Greetings. I'm David Ferriero, Archivist of the United States. It's an honor to be part of the 75th anniversary marking the start of an important and historic partnership between the National Park Service and the National Archives. I'll follow the advice of FDR. I'm going to be brief, I'm going to be sincere, and I'm going to be seated. On that early spring day in April 1946, President Harry Truman was joined by many dignitaries, including the second archivist of the United States, Solon J. Buck, and Secretary of the Interior, Julius Albert Krug. The president noted that we are here not only to do honor to the immortal spirit of Franklin Roosevelt, we are here to gain strength for what is ahead. Here where he was born, 
in the spot which he loved the best in all the world, he is now at rest. We shall not soon see his like again. Right before the president spoke those words, he had visited the presidential library just a few hundred feet away. There he met with Mrs. Roosevelt and my predecessor Solon Buck in FDR's private study. From there they went to the Rose Garden to lay a wreath on the gravesite of Franklin Roosevelt. During the formal ceremony opening the home to the public, Secretary of the Interior crew predicted that the people he loved will come here. Young people, poor people, aliens and neighbors, men who are freer men because he lived, statesmen from many lands will come. May his memory deliver all of them from selfishness and greed. May he forever share with all who come something of his timeless qualities, his contagious vitality, his gallant courage, and his infinite compassion. Looking back 75 years, we now know that prediction has come true. Millions of people from around the world have come to visit the home and the library to experience the Roosevelt legacy firsthand. They have been welcomed, informed, and inspired. And our two agencies, whose missions are to preserve our most precious history, will continue to work together to fulfill FDR's vision of a sanctuary where people can come to study the past to better prepare for the future. I wish to congratulate the Franklin D. Roosevelt National Historic Site on its 75th anniversary. Springwood, the handsome estate on a bluff overlooking the Hudson River that's the center of this site is the birthplace, lifetime home, and burial site of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, New York State Senator, New York Governor, and 32nd President of the United States. What I always love to share about FDR though, is that when asked his occupation, he would say tree farmer, a testament to his deep roots in the Hyde Park community and in the rich farmland of the beautiful Hudson Valley. This location is where Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt raised their family and where they returned over and over to host friends, dignitaries, and royalty, most famously the King and Queen of England. During this past year, we've all gained a new appreciation for the importance of home, especially as a safe and stable refuge. Springwood was that for FDR, as Eleanor Roosevelt pointed out 75 years ago at the dedication of the home as a National Historic Site. Life here had always a healing quality for him, she said in her remarks. It has been my greatest honor to represent the beautiful 106th Assembly District in the New York State Legislature in no small part just to connect with the unmatched legacy of public service of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Happy birthday. Hi, I'm Paul Sparrow, the director of the Franklin Roosevelt Presidential Library and Museum, and it is an honor to be a part of the 75th anniversary of the opening of the home of Franklin Roosevelt National Historic Site. The National Archives and the National Park Service work closely together to preserve and protect the legacy of Franklin Roosevelt. On that spring day in 1946, Mrs. Roosevelt came here to formally donate this property to the American people. She said, my husband's spirit will live in this house, in the library, and in the quiet garden inside the hedge where he wished his body to lie. It is his life and his character and his personality which will live with us and which will endure and be imported to those who come here. Mrs. Roosevelt also met with President Truman that day, and they laid a wreath on the gravesite of Franklin Roosevelt. Over the years, millions of people from around the world have come here to pay their respects and to honor the Roosevelt's remarkable achievements. May this great historic site continue to inspire and motivate new generations to follow in their footsteps. Over the years, millions of people from around the world have come to this site to honor the legacy, of the remarkable achievements of the Roosevelt's. May this historic site continue to preserve and protect their legacy and inspire new generations to follow in their footsteps. Franklin Delano Roosevelt had an immeasurable impact on this nation and this entire globe on who we are and how we live. And certainly as a Dutchess County resident, we celebrate his lasting legacy, his leadership and 75 years of his home as a national landmark. So we welcome you back to the FDR Home and Library. And if you've not been, we welcome you for the very first time. Come back here to celebrate this amazing man, uh, his life, his legacy, and the impact this place has had in our community. 
As supervisor of the Town of Hyde Park, I'm here to applaud FDR and Eleanor for leaving us their beautiful legacy in the manifestation of this, this beautiful home and library. Uh, we're grateful for your presence here always and wishing uh, our, the home and all involved a very happy 75th anniversary. Hi everyone, I'm Father Chuck Kramer. And for 23 years, I was the rector of St. James Episcopal Church in Hyde Park, where Franklin Roosevelt was a lifelong member. He was also the senior warden of the church until his dying day. The relationship between the Roosevelt home and the church has been strong for decades. When the King and Queen of England visited Hyde Park in 1939, they stayed at the Roosevelt home. They also attended church at St. James. Afterward, the king gave a signed Bible to the church as a thank you gift. Since then, that Bible has been held in trust for the church by the FDR library, which of course was built on the grounds of the Roosevelt home. Heck, as rector of St. James, I've offered the invocation and benediction at more than 60 events on the very Roosevelt home grounds. The fact that this home has been a national historic site for 75 years, shows us Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt's lasting legacy. It also shows us the lasting impact of the work that both of them did on behalf of the nation and of the world. Their home was the site of church meetings, royal gatherings, and international intrigue that shaped the course of the world for three quarters of a century and continues to do so today. That's why I'm delighted to offer my sincerest congratulations to the National Park Service on the 75th anniversary of the dedication of FDR's home as a National Historic Site. May it serve to enlighten and inspire future generations to the sort of service that is synonymous with the name Roosevelt. I spent eight years off and on working on my Roosevelt books and going in and out of Springwood almost every day. Um, it's a magical place for me. It's a glimpse, a mirror of Roosevelt's world, the world that made him, and the place that meant the most to him. I am thrilled that it is the 75th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Springwood. Hi, this is Douglas Brinkley. I'm CNN Presidential Historian and Professor of History at Rice University and Presidential Historian for New York Historical Society in Manhattan. And I want to say happy 75th birthday to the Franklin D. Roosevelt National Historic Site. It's incredible that Springwood now has been part of that system for 75 years. There is really no presidential site in the United States quite like Springwood. This was where Franklin Roosevelt was born and came of age. This was where he would live during his time as governor of New York and come there as often as he could um, during his presidency, four different terms. World leaders would visit FDR there. But uh, there are a couple things about Springwood that's just so remarkable. You could go to the foyer and see all the birds that he collected as an amateur ornithologist. You can go to the desk where he would keep both his postage stamps, books, and do um, you know executive orders that change the world. You could go to the upstairs and get a view of the Hudson River, which he called that artery uh, the lifeblood of myself, that everything I am is part of the Hudson. We forget sometimes that FDR liked a pastoral life. He really wasn't a urban city person. He represented the people of Dutchess County. Some would, would grow orchids and others would do timbering. People would fish in the Hudson River. They were dirt farmers. He always had a kind of rural constituency that he loved. Um, the church down the road he would go to, um, the, where, the post office he was so proud of. And it, when you're there at Springwood, you also learn the story of Eleanor Roosevelt, our great first lady, and that amazing an interesting marriage between Franklin and Eleanor. So it's, a, it's extraordinary that that site has started, really launched the idea of a presidential library system, um, and yet it's none are like that. I've done research at the Reagan Library and the Kennedy Library and all these others, 
but nothing is like going to the house where the president lived and then all the papers of his years and public life and all of his private scrapbooks and notebooks are right there also with the museum that gives you a walk through America in the first half of the 20th century. Um, FDR is, in my view, the great American president. I know we put Lincoln first and we put Washington second and FDR first, but when you spend time at Springwood and you go and do research, the National Archives site there, uh, you start really understanding that FDR is the person who did more for America uh, because they are coming of age with additional Lincoln in the Civil War was World War II and FDR did a stunning job of pulling us through that big ordeal. Uh, I'm Wint Aldrich. Uh, for over 50 years, I've been deeply involved in land conservation and historic preservation here in the Hudson Valley and elsewhere in New York State. And uh, some years ago, I became a founding board member of the Franklin D. Roosevelt Hyde Park Foundation. Uh, and I continue to be on that board, uh, a fine organization, the purpose of which is to provide needed support for the National Park Service uh, as it discharges its tremendously important responsibilities uh, here at the Roosevelt sites uh, in Hyde Park. Seventy-five years ago, the Roosevelt family made the generous donation of these premises uh, to the people of the United States in compliance with President Roosevelt's long-held wishes. Uh, and 75 years ago, uh, 1946, it was first opened to the public. During the intervening decades, it has become a place of pilgrimage for hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world, but particularly from this country, uh, people who, uh, remembering the Roosevelt's, remembering their legacy of leadership, of empathy, of public service on behalf of the uh, less advantaged among us, um, found uh, real sustenance, I think, in visiting the place where the president was born where he chose to be buried and where he chose to situate his wonderful library and museum. Uh, during those 75 years, um, much has happened here. Famous people have come here. Uh, and uh, it is for this generation and those that follow us today uh, to return to Hyde Park but perhaps not as a pilgrimage, but more as a place to, to find a place where, where inspiration will come to them uh, and a, a renewal of the American spirit of, of that same sense of empathy and leadership and service on behalf of the disadvantaged uh, that so characterized the Roosevelt's in their time. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, a renewal of a commitment to the dream of a United Nations, of a world peace uh, that uh, so inspired us all uh, at the end of World War II when the UN was first created, uh, the great abiding dream of President Roosevelt and of Mrs. Roosevelt. Um, now, the National Park Service, uh, I am unstinting in my admiration for how they have discharge their tremendously important responsibilities here during these 75 years. In terms of maintenance, of restoration, of interpretation, of promotion, they really are a model government agency in, in what they've accomplished. And now, in honor of the 75th anniversary, of the house behind me, Springwood, where the president was born, uh, is undergoing uh, a, a, a refurbishment both inside and out, uh, both architectural features and furnishings, and we are promised uh, a uh, uh, updating of the approaches to interpretation um, on the part of the docents and guides here. All this is wonderful news, um, and all I can think is that uh, as soon as it's safe and COVID in, in fast retreat um, 
as soon as it's safe to visit the interiors of these buildings here at Hyde Park, uh, I urge everyone to come on home and see this remarkable place once again. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Karen Waltuck, the horticulturist for the Beatrix Fair and Garden Association. On behalf of our board, our members, and our volunteers, I want to wish a very happy 75th anniversary to the home of FDR National Historic Site. Here on the grounds of the FDR site, the gardens at the Belfield Mansion were designed by the foremost female American landscape gardener, Beatrix Farrand, in 1912, at the same time as a greater restoration of the home was being completed by the architectural firm of McKim, Mead, and White. Beatrix Farron was a cousin to the father of the family living here at the time, New York State Senator Thomas Newbold. The Newbolts and the Roosevelts were good friends, and we have diary entries and photographs documenting their long relationship. Descendants of the Newbolds, the Morgan family, donated Belfield, the Beatrix Farron Garden, and the surrounding property to the National Park Service in 1975. Almost two decades later, the derelict walled garden was rediscovered by local residents, and it was realized to be the oldest surviving Beatrix Fair and Garden design. Our organization began the restoration in 1993, and we are now officially a very proud and grateful National Park Partner Group. We hope that when you next visit the home of FDR National Historic Site, you stop by for a visit at the Beatrix Fair and Garden. It is our honor to celebrate this important 75th anniversary and to be part of all of the wonderful attractions that this site has to offer. Hi, I'm Kevin Burke. Ever since I was a kid growing up in Newburgh, just down the Hudson from Hyde Park, I've looked at the home of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt as a place of sanctuary, study, and inspiration. Now, anyone from the Hudson Valley knows why it must have meant the world to the president and why he longed to return to it whenever he could get away from the pressures of the, of the White House. It is a place rich in history, cultural connections, and natural wonders. And by gifting his home to the federal government, FDR let us know that we couldn't possibly understand him or the era that he helped to shape without spending time in the place where he was from and where he'd come of age. He also created a gateway and gathering spot for visitors from the region, the nation, and the world to come together and reflect on history and its urgent relevancy to our present and future. So as a childhood neighbor, as an historian, as a presidential library trustee, and as chair of the Franklin D. Roosevelt Hyde Park Foundation, I congratulate and thank the National Park Service on 75 years as the stewards of this special place and hope that in meeting the challenges of our day, we the people, continue to visit Hyde Park for sanctuary, study, and inspiration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Melaine Rotkamp and I'm the president and CEO of Duchess Tourism. FDR once stated, all it is within me cries out to go back to my home on the Hudson River. We are so thankful that he and Eleanor made arrangements for their home to be open to visitors from all over the world so they too could experience the joy of visiting our beautiful area and learning about the incredible impact Franklin and Eleanor had on our world. Thank you to the National Park Service and their dedicated employees and volunteers here in Hyde Park for being good stewards of this very special place and for bringing their legacy to life. Congratulations on celebrating 75 wonderful years. We look forward to many more. My grandfather thought a lot about life after the White House. By establishing the Presidential Library at his childhood home and giving his home to the nation, he hoped to give the American people an understanding of the many facets of the presidency and the impact of and on the person who holds that office. He wanted us to know how he made decisions, and he wanted people to see that the president was a real person who loved family and nature and friends, and who needed peace and comfort from the stress and burdens of the job. He wanted the rooms to look lived in, like he'd just been there, and he didn't want the National Park Service to call it the FDR home. It sounded too much like a home for discarded politicians, he said. So he flipped it around to the home of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
While Springwood is a homey, comfortable house, it is big. It's always struck me that the homes he designed for himself, Top Cottage, Valkyll, Warm Springs, were also modest in scale and design. He loved Springwood and he owed much of his sense of security to the place, but it was his mother's house. It was the past, so he gave it away. The family thanks the National Park Service for their care for the home in the beautiful Hudson River Valley that was so dear to our grandfather. We enjoy visiting there, right along with everyone else.